Hi, my name is Taryn Kale, and welcome to part three of the Love and Longhorns Punch Needle Rug Hooking Pattern Tutorial. The pattern PDF offers a 9 inch square and 16 inch square for both traditional and punch needle rug hooking. This tutorial uses the 16 inch square for punch needle rug hooking. First, let's talk about how stitches fall along the holes of the weave. You will hear me refer to both holes and the spaces between fibers of the monk's cloth. When you punch along a straight line, you will always punch into the holes of the weave. But if you're working along a curve or a diagonal line that isn't an exact 45 degree angle, you're going to have to follow the line and not the holes of the monk's cloth. So you'll sometimes have to punch in between the weave fibers. Now let's punch the heart at the center of our pattern. From the bottom of the heart, the first few outline stitches will follow a 45 degree angle, punching into every other hole. But quickly you'll see that in order to continue with the heart outline, some of the stitches will have to be placed into the spaces between the monk's cloth fibers. Be careful to follow the line of the pattern and not where the holes are leading you. Before we continue, it will be helpful to have your Oxford punch needles and the accompanying stitch gauge they came with on hand. Next I'll explain about what stitches and sizes are suggested for the Valentine heart shape. This is the Valentine shape as punched for the 16 inch example project. I outlined the heart shape first with 6 stitches per inch. I skipped one hole in between every punch. The second row into the heart shape also uses a number 10 Oxford punch needle, but this time I'm using a filling appropriate stitch length of 4 per inch which works out to skipping two holes in between punches. The next three rows will also be four stitches per inch, but I now have switched to a number nine Oxford punch needle. The next two rows are the last to follow the heart shape and are made with a number eight Oxford punch needle. And now I've added the final stitches to fill the piece. I'm using whatever shapes best preserve the four stitches per inch stitch guidelines and fill the remaining space. I've finished the arrow by punching the horizontal line, flight lines, and arrow outline with the number 10 Oxford punch needle at 6 stitches per inch, and filled the arrow by spiraling inward along the triangle shape with the number 9 Oxford punch needle at 4 stitches per inch. Let me now mention that the arrow's horizontal line, the flight lines, arrowhead, and heart outline are made using a stem stitch. While a regular stitch is made with the punch needle's open seam facing in the direction you're punching, the stem stitch will have that opening turned 90 degrees of the intended path. Before we move on to the next section, let's talk about the arrow's horizontal line. When punching a piece, you're always making decisions along the way. For example, when I punched the flight lines, I considered punching one long line and connecting smaller lines to it, but I decided to go with punching two V-shaped lines instead and then punching the horizontal line in between them. You may decide on a different strategy. And finally, enjoy punching the Valentine arrow shape. And remember that since there's no background yet, the details will look a bit messy. Concentrate on even stitches and make sure you have your stitch gauge handy and use it often. If you'd like to purchase this pattern as a digital download, visit www.texascharmtradingcompany.com or my Etsy shop, Texas Charm Trading Co. If you'd like to see more videos like this, subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.